it's Dominique and in this video I'm going to show you how to make um, the broomstick loop so what you need is a very large knitting needle this is size 20 millimeters it's pretty big you can use a ruler it doesn't have to be 20 millimeters it can be something a little smaller but in general you want something very very big because that's what creates the loops you could use a broomstick I suppose but not necessary and you need a smaller crochet hook somewhere between the size of two and a half millimeters to three and a half millimeters you also need thin yarn so that would be like level A so a sock yarn very fine yarn it can be mohair if you want. I'm using Drops Garn Studio Baby Merino in a light blue. <clears throat> so all this is, just to give you a quick overview, um, what you're doing is you're, you start with a chain of however many stitches you want. So if you want your project to be very, very wide, for example, this will be a scarf eventually. So this is made up of 45 stitches or 45 chains at the beginning and you can choose whatever number you want as long as it's in increments of 5. That's the important thing for this technique. So you can do 20, 25, 30, 35, etc. And then what happens is once you've made your chain what we'll do is we'll create loops out of the chain and put them onto your large knitting needle and then group the loops together like such and then slip them off and give them a little tug and that's how you get this kind of wave looking broomstick loop. It's a little bit different than what you might be used to. So let's get started. So this is my example that I've already worked on. Now, take your yarn, um, just for the sake of this being an example, I'm only going to do 10 stitches instead of a full 40 or 45. So what you want to do is start your slip knot And this yarn in my hand is also by Drops Garden Studio. It's called Paris. It's a cotton yarn and does fray a little bit. So I do have some difficulty sometimes with them making the loops because it, the yarn tends to split a bit. Okay, so now that your slip knot is in place on your crochet hook, um, I recommend as well something comfortable because this is a slow technique. So you really want to have a good grip on your crochet hook and something comfortable. Okay, so make your chains. I'm going to do 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, Okay, so I have 10 chains or 10 V's if you want to look at it that way. Try and crochet loosely um, while doing this technique because it will make things easier when you create the loops to put them onto your knitting needle, which you'll see in a moment. So 10 stitches. You can put your needle uh, between your knees or under your arm. I'm just going to try and hold it under my elbow and work as best as I can. So now the loop that's on your crochet hook, extend it so it's big enough to fit over your needle. <coughs> Tighten the loop. It doesn't have to be super tight especially where you're just practicing and just learning how to do this and then once you have your own method 
of tension, then you can do as you please. So, to make the next loop onto your needle, what you want to do is take your crochet hook, and this is why it's important to loosely crochet, and flip your chain so that facing you are the V-shapes, or it looks like a braid. Insert your hook into the next chain and draw up a loop from the long end of the yarn or the working yarn. Okay, and then I'm just going to yarn over, pull it through. extend it and slip it onto the knitting needle and then tighten it slightly. So repeat this for however many um, chain stitches you have. I find wrapping the yarn in my left hand is a little helpful. Oops. So you can use this pattern to make anything square or rectangle, uh, rectangular, sorry. So scarf, a belt, bookmark in a fine lace yarn would be really pretty. And as well, you can use multicolored yarn. That works really nicely as well. and try not to miss any stitches. You may be off by one. Either you have one too many or one not enough, but it will work itself out in the end. And I'm just going to pull on this tail piece because it came loose. There we go. Okay, so let me just double check. I have two, four, six, eight, ten. So now you have ten big loops, and this is a part where we're going to group the loops into groups of five. So what we're going to do is take your crochet hook okay take your crochet hook and insert it underneath these loops in behind the needle so you want to go under five loops try not to catch on to anything 
it's a little tricky so what I like to do is I like to actually slip the group of five I'm working on right where the needle starts to come to a point that way it's easier to weave my hook into there whoops okay so I have five loops one two three four five and now what you want to do is take the working yarn and pull it through those five loops and I'm just going to hold on to the tail in the back so that way it doesn't get in my way make sure you don't slide your loops off if you can okay so now we have a group of five loops that are going to stay together so now what you want to do is a single crochet alright so five loops together they're going to stay together and to really keep them together you want to do four more single crochet um, underneath the five big loops that way it keeps them nice and tight together so that was the first one so the special number seems to be five so five loops and then five single crochets to keep them together so just insert your hook underneath those five loops it'll be easier now that you have your first single crochet in place to hold everything so two loops there yarn over and pull through so some people call this single crochet and some call this double crochet depends where you're from and how you were taught yarn over pull through so what you'll start to see is a chain or V's forming along the top So that was two, one and two. So I have to go three more times. My yarn is fraying here, sorry. Just a moment. <coughs> Okay, so I did my five, just show you here. I did my five single crochets around my first group of five loops. So now that that's done, you can slide it off. It will stay together because of the five single crochet. And then you're going to do the same thing for each group of five all the way across the length of your large knitting needle or ruler
Okay. So this is where you should try and figure out how you want to hold your work so you're most comfortable. For me, I like holding my knitting needle under my left armpit um, and then holding the working yarn in my left hand and the crochet hook in my right, but it's entirely up to you. So go underneath, in behind and underneath the f next five loops. Yarn over, pull it through, do a single crochet. So try to keep the loops on the needle. And then make a total of five single crochet. So I'm going to keep going with this and in the next video, which will be part two, I'm going to show you what happens um, after you're done your groups of five. Thank you so much for watching.